Elsa's days in this earthly coil are numbered in 1883 Season 1. Episode 10, This Is Not Your Heaven. Episode 10 is directed by Ben Richardson and written by Taylor Sheridan. It opens with our pioneers arriving to Fort Caspar to seek medical care for Elsa, Joseph, and Risa. The trio is hailed by two young men who take James, Captain Shi, and the recently fainted Elsa to the doctor, Major Hemphill, after the army abandons the fort. He is unable to help Elsa, but when they leave, she finds that the fort is now held by the Wyoming Stock Growers Association, the same group whose deputies murdered the Lakota women and children and were later slain in vengeance by James. She and Thomas. Margaret receives a call from James, who advises her to get ready to journey north to Montana in search of Elsa's ultimate resting place and their new home. She informs the pioneers that they would spend the winter in the Bozeman Valley before moving on to Oregon in the spring. Knowing that the group is in danger, with Joseph crippled, a revolt breaks out, and the other settlers decide to continue on their own. Without she, to Oregon, Nomi agrees to drive Joseph and Reese's wagon, and she, Thomas, and her two kids decide to accompany she and the Duttons to Montana to spend the winter with them. Elsa, Wade, and Colton exchange a romantic farewell, and the two Wranglers return to Texas, abandoning the cattle and wagon party. The destiny of the naive pioneers, according to Elsa, lay in the depths of unmarked graves along the Oregon path. Regrettably, her prediction has come true. Your leg is decaying, and death is making its way up, Thomas says later that night at camp, pointing to Joseph's rotting leg. Now you may either take the limb or perish with it. Joseph instructs Thomas to take the leg, and Thomas enlists the assistance of she, James, Margaret, and Nomi. Joseph is handed a bottle of whiskey by she who instructs him to drink half of it in order to become so drunk you can't see straight. I'm German. Joseph responds with a giggle. I'm just halfway through this bottle, and I'm just getting started. This chuckle is much needed after the gory and horrific amputation of Joseph's leg that follows. He survives the surgery, prompting Elsa to mutter faintly from her carriage, sure happy I ain't been shot in the leg. After they arrive in Montana, James departs from the party to go hunting. She and Elsa are soon contacted by three Crow tribal members. When Elsa sees them, she falls. Spotted Eagle offers to take her to his tribe so that they may care for her. But Elsa's fate is sealed despite his people's best attempts. The Lakota soak their arrows in excrement so a strike is lethal and an arrow to the liver is for definite. Spotted Eagle says gravely as James arrives at the camp. In seven generations, my people will rise up and take it back from you. He tells James as he recommends a plot of land in the Paradise Valley for his family to reside on. That seems reasonable to James. Elsa, realizing that she would undoubtedly die, asks James if she can choose where she will be buried. And he agrees. Later that night, while James and she relax by the fire, Thomas and Nomi discuss arrangements to live in Oregon together. She is asked to assist James explain to Margaret why he and Elsa would be leaving the group separately in the morning to discover Elsa's tomb. Joseph realizes Risa has died in her sleep while the others formulate their preparations. Elsa and James make their journey to Paradise Valley, the future site of the Yellowstone Ranch, after a sorrowful goodbye with Margaret and she. As Elsa finds her final resting spot in the forest, the environment is stunning. As she draws her final breath, Elsa tells James, I'm not worried. The fate of the other characters is revealed at the end of the episode. And we cut to Sam waiting for Elsa in the spring place he promised her. My heaven is filled with good horses and broad plains and wild cattle and a guy who loves me. The voiceover narrative begins as Elsa approaches the horizon. Elsa is content and at peace. There is no safe haven. Elsa, she, and James are astonished to be welcomed by two youths instead of soldiers when they arrive at Fort Caspar indicating that the fort is no longer an army garrison. Major Hemphill, a doctor, checks Elsa as she falls from her injuries. He's obnoxious and useless, claiming that Fort Caspar, where she may have found assistance, has been abandoned. The group dejectedly departs, but not before she learns that the Wyoming Stock Growers Association, the organization responsible for the massacre of Lakota women and children, has taken over Fort Caspar. They'll find the deputies we killed in no time. As they return to the wagons, she laments to James, this whole country will be chasing us. She and James plan to take the Bozeman path north to Montana. There is no doctor. She reiterates when Thomas maintains that Joseph and Risa require medical assistance. More of those criminals, and if we remain here long enough, they'll hang us. When Thomas, Nomi, her sons, and Joseph learn of this, they decide to accompany she and the Duttons north for the winter instead of continuing on the Oregon Trail with the doomed pioneers. A final father-daughter conversation. As they approach Montana territory, Elsa and James ride beside each other. I'm not sure what Oregon looks like, but I assume it's not like this, Elsa observes. I should have set my sights on this location from the outset. James agrees as he takes in the grandeur of their surroundings. The only people who know what it looks like are already there. Elsa continues. It's kind of amusing when you think about it. All those Europeans, who don't understand our language and have no idea what's going on here, are risking their lives based on stories and dreams. James responds with a melancholy remark. Honey, rumors and dreams are what make the world go round. 
When Elsa adds, want to hear my greatest fear about dying, their conversation becomes serious. It's being forgotten, and I'm not sure why. I won't be here to know whether anyone forgot about me. No one is going to forget you. Elsa, James says solemnly, I look at you for what you are, the most important thing to me on this earth. James says Elsa after she tells him he stares at her like she's dying. That fills me with dread since I can't replace you. Warning and Eagle's gift scene. Where we lay her in the earth is where we remain. James says Spotted Eagle as he and his troops do everything they can for Elsa. I have locate that site soon. Spotted Eagle gives him a present in an astounding gesture of kindness. I know a spot for you. You cross through that pass and continue south along the river. As a kid, I used to go hunting in the valley. Winters are harsh, but summers are plenty. A guy who prepares ahead may succeed. And you have the appearance of a man who plans ahead. It has been decided. The Duttons will establish their home in Paradise Valley. Know this, Spotted Eagle cautions. My people will rise up in seven generations and reclaim it from you. You can have it for seven generations, James says undeterred. Someday my family could wish to hunt that valley. And if they do, you remember me and you allow them. Spotted Eagle says, looking out for his people. Your family can hunt the day I get there and every day after. James generously offers. Yellowstone fans will recall that James lets Red Bear and his family to bury his father in Paradise Valley in the season 4 opener. The Duttons appear to have remembered Spotted Eagle's kindness. At last, friends, the relationship between James and she has been rocky throughout the series. But it's evident that they've always had a profound regard for one another. I've lost a daughter, too, she admits as they sit by the fire. You're going to blame yourself, thinking it's because you gave her so much power. She has outlived us all. She soothes James, recalling Elsa's vivacity and great spirits. I'm 75 years old, and she's outlived me, outsmiled me, outloved me, outfought me. She's outlived us all, knowing that Elsa has a limited amount of time to choose her burial site. James knows that he and Elsa will have to do it alone to select her cemetery. This wagon won't make the journey in time, he says to she. My son is unable to complete the journey on horseback, and I have given her my word. I can't allow her life come to an end because of me. I have absolutely no clue how to tell my wife I have to take her daughter away from her to die. James says, pleading with she to help him break the news to Margaret and she is unable to go. You'll be the one to explain the rationale to her. All she'll hear from me is the nastiness. She, thankfully, is up to the challenge. Epilogue. We flash forward a year after we watch Elsa die in James' arms at the base of a tree. She has delivered Joseph to Oregon as promised. On crutches, Joseph removes his wedding ring and begins construction on his freshly purchased plot of land. Nomi, Thomas, and her boys are preparing to stake out their land in the Willamette Valley so that they may start building their life together. Do you think it's too far? Nomi smiles as she asks Thomas. Nothing is too far for us. If you want the river, I'll stake you a river, Thomas says, his face beaming with anticipation for the future. She tells Elsa in episode 6 that he's going to Oregon to view the ocean since it's his wife's dream. She sits on the beach, watching the waves break on the coast with tears in his eyes the last time we see him. She interprets a hummingbird flying close next to him as a sign that his wife is around. We watch she pull out his revolver and murder himself so that he may join his loving wife and daughter in the hereafter as the camera fades to a long view. Perhaps you'll also see Elsa there. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to this channel, subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out latest video of Media Breakdown.